Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm planning on doing the Leak Code Contest from yesterday. Leak Code Contest 312 virtually. So here we go. Time to shine. All right, open these guys up here. With the people, their heights, okay. So we can map them and then sort them by their heights, right? A and B. Or I in, so N is B by size, zero until N. Oh, wait, hold on. We don't want to sort them, right? So stick them into something and sort of guide that something, right? So let's do sorted by height, right? Sorted mutable map. Hold on. Let's just do this in Python first. <laughs> I can do this easier. Easier on myself, right? So C equals zip A and B. C dot sort key equals comp to key the function lambda A B. And we're gonna sort by heights. So A sub one minus B sub one. And then we're gonna output the name. So return. We want the first, which is name. Name for name underscore in C. Something like that. Whoa, the zip has no, oh, is it a list of zip? John, Emma, Mary, Bob, Alice, Bob. Uh oh, oh, it's ascending. Yeah, okay. So B and then A. Okay. Good. Okay, let's. Yeah, let's just do this in the other languages here real quick, and then we'll move on. Nothing too fancy, right? Okay, so this guy can actually be the sorted that and filter this all in one. So let's refactor this here real quick. And uh, so A, B, and then we're going to say zip A, B, right? So name for name comma underscore in sorted list e equals come to key lambda a b b so by descending height something like that okay looks good uh oh Closing parentheses don't match the open parentheses. Uh, there we go. Run the code, looks cool. Murray, Emma, John, yep. Okay, let's do this. A few solutions. I see zip. The input names and heights. Sort by height. And filter by name. All right, good enough. Come in JavaScript. Python 3, rest will be a, a good challenge. It's always a good challenge. And C++, C++, so powerfully C++, it doesn't have a very good functional interface, but we'll do the best to make it concise. It's not gonna be one liner like this, that's for sure. Okay, so that's that. A and heights. B.
whatever. Don't need capitalization, nothing too fancy. Okay, let's do this in JavaScript next. Okay, A, B, and okay, let's just skip straight to the what we want to return, right? Um, so use lodash to zip A and B, and then dot sort A B. A sub one, oops, descending. So B sub one minus A sub one dot filter. Or not a map, map name height just name should be good enough. Uh oh, map. Oh, destructure that thing. Looks good. That's cool. Stick this in here. Cutlin. Okay, so let's do this. Change this guy into a lambda. A is a string array. B is that thing. Okay, so that's a parameter list. Arrow thingy. Okay, and A, A is it B? Sort. With comparator. Ray comparator. I'm not gonna look this up. Kotlin sort with comparator. Sort with comparator. Mm -hmm. Let's see, compared to descending. Let's compare it. Uh, oh, compare to descending. Hit that. I wonder if I can do it that second. Compare by descending. Hit that second. That map. Name, height. Name. Uh oh, kind of protect from this parameter. Please specify it explicitly. Really? Too many arguments. Uh, whoop. Is it B? But yeah, it should be a list of pairs. Not enough information to infer parameter T. Oh, interesting. Okay, hold on. Let me open up my Kotlin here real quick. <laughs> okay, I'll move this over here so you all know what I'm doing. Oops. Uh, open this guy. Where's my where's snap tool? There we go. Okay. Let's start with, here's my comparator, okay. A, B, okay, there we go. There's my example, okay. Comparator, right, comparator, and then this, okay. Comparator, A, which is a pair, a list of pair, right? Holy cow, uh, a list, uh, okay, so 
type alias pair string i pair of string integer psi. A dot second dot compare to a dot second. So it's descending order, right? Something like that. Uh oh. Cannot infer type. Really? I think you destructure the pair. A zip B, why can't I zip them? Really? Hmm. Well, that's strange. I thought we could zip these things. It's an interray and array of string. Um, I mean, this needs to be an array of string too. B dot map it dot two string dot two typed array, so that's an array of string. I think that's good enough? No. Oh, okay, so it should be a pair of string string in this case, right? PSS, pair of string string, it's a pair of string integer. No, okay, so Kotlin is giving me a real hard time here. Because of receiver type mismatch, pair string string, what the heck is this thing? What? Let's sort with two typed array. Cannot infer type for this parameter. Which parameter? Name, really? It's a string. Come on. Map the pair. Filter now name. Okay, well, obviously, I don't know Cotton that well. <laughs> Hold on. Let's do this. Uh, hold on. Default definition, fine. Okay, A, B. <clears throat> C is type alias PSI as pair string and immutable list of Let's just do a zip b dot for i and a c dot size for i and zero until n. Let's just output this thing, right? It dot first, it dot second. Array of string, just so it compiles. Get some debug output, really? Okay, so I can't zip two different types, fine. B dot map it dot two string dot two typed array. So that's an array of string.
It's oh, c sub i dot first and c sub i dot second. Each i element of c is a pair, right? Okay, that looks good. And we want to sort these pairs. Oh man, okay. C dot sort comparator A PSI B PSI or PSS, right? PSS pair of string string. That one doesn't like a pair of string ints to be zipped, fine. B dot second dot compare to A dot second. All right, so we'll sort them by their name. So or not their height descending. No, that's not cool. Kotlin does not like this one bit. Should be sort. Hmm. Yeah, there is, is there a char array? I can sort a char array, but I can't sort a string array. Hmm. B dot second dot two char array dot compare to a dot second dot two char array. Nope. Okay, this is not happening. Is it char array? Hmm. Unresolved reference. <laughs> okay, well, this sucks. I think there's a sort of map I could use. Let's try that instead. Hotland sorted map, right? Where the key can be, our two sorted map is fine. All right, let's do this. M is a mutable map of int string or I n is a data size zero until n. I just push this in here. M dot add. Oh, actually, M. Oh, it could be the same. I want to use a multi map. Kotlin's multi map. Is there a multi? No, there isn't. Ugh. Okay, Kotlin makes this really hard. <laughs> it's extremely difficult in Kotlin. Holy cow. Heights, scene heights. Fine, let's do this the hard way. Scene is B dot two set. Yeah. 
M sub B sub I. It can be a list of names and it doesn't matter. Are other distinct? Okay, they are distinct. So there's only one name per height. Let's see, uh, Cutlin, mute, mutable sorted map. Does that work? Two sorted map. Okay, fine. Turn m dot two sorted map dot map. It's dot first by the name, or oops, it's that second is name. Oh, and then uh, the two typed array, right? That's two typed array. Otherwise, it's just a list, I think. M dot two sorted map dot map. Okay, it doesn't know what it dot second is. Really? Huh. Okay, we'll destructure it. So Okay, looks good. Well, no. Oh, I need to reverse it. Okay, that two sorted map dot reversed. Oh, reverse doesn't work. Holy cow. Okay. Ay, ay, ay. And, uh, make those negative. It should be John, Emma, Mary. Negative values. What? Should be Mary, Emma, John. Mary. Two sorted map. What the heck? Right, name and M. Right, name. Uh, I wonder if we can read. No, I don't think we can reassign this thing. Sorted, it goes into two sorted map. Sorted. Come on, this is taking way too long. Mary, Emma, John, Mary, Emma. Hmm. So why doesn't it work the other way then? I mean, that, that does look correct. Oops, hold on, don't need to send my phone. And that should be good, right? That should be accepted. Okay, that's accepted. Why is this not accepted? M.2 sorted map dot map. Isn't it the same? Yeah, it looks fine. Man, what a complicated, okay, so I don't need seen. Holy cow. Okay, that's that's a decent solution. Good enough. And gave me a really hard time. Well, let's do C. At least I'm decent at C. This shouldn't be so painful. Shorten up these things here. 
Okay, Victor string, Victor string, Victor of integers. Okay, and then map. Uh, actually, you might as well just sort it, right? Sorted map, int and string. For each I value, M sub B sub I, sorry, in descending order equals A sub I. And then we'll map it to its second. And return it as a vector of string. Copy and up again, or actually transform. Transform is the same, same thing as map. Back inserter, the answer. Pair, destructure the pair based on the height and the name. Char the name. Okay. There we go. Oh. What is it complaining about? Oh, turn the answer in the end. Looks good. Yay. Okay. I will try Rust. Hopefully, it's easier than Kotlin. My goodness. Okay, type yes goes fix string bi back a two yes i yes okay so. You zip things in Rust, hold on, Rust, zip. Get her in zip. Debug for A zip B. Where's uh, an example here real quick? Hmm? Rest zip example. Let's zip two slices efficiently. Just iterate and zip it, I guess, right? Okay. Oof, hold on. Create scene, sort it. Mute C equals A dot into iter. Iter. Zip B. Let's print this out. It's a debug print. Try to answer in the end. Zip, what? Locked it as string I32. Nope, value uh, cannot be built from reference to the string. What, really? Why not? And uh, into iter, move ownership into copy. Mm -hmm. Really, come on. String I32 cannot be built from this thing, which is string I32. 
Holy cow. Okay, whatever. Well, we'll just post this for now. To do. <laughs> Implement me. That's good enough. Start by descending height and filter by name. Good enough. Okay, let's move on. Okay, that one took, holy cow, 30 minutes. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's get going. About one hour. Meaning contest. Q3 took about, or Q1 took 30 minutes. Okay, you can finish right now. I'm just keeping the maximum value of the device and of any subarray of nums. From the longest such subarray as the maximum possible bitwise and the maximum possible bitwise and of a subarray is three. The longest subarray with that value is three, three. So return two. The maximum possible erase and of the subarray is four. The maximum possible bitwise and must be the maximum value. All right, so we're looking for the maximum value. Our target is the maximum of A. We want to return the longest length of A's together. Let's do this best. Turn the best to the M and 4X and A. Best length. Let's count, right? Count to zero. Let's do this. Count to zero. One, return the best count. If x is equal to our target, then we count. Let's say it's one. Best is maximum of best count. Otherwise, count equals zero. Two and one is cool. All right, that's good. Okay, yeah, uh, so our maximum target is a few solutions. Let the target T be the maximum value of the input array A. Then return the maximum adjacent count of target T within A. Good enough. Right. And JavaScript. Python three. Rust. C plus plus. Okay. A decent solution. Nothing too fancy. Okay, count zero, best zero, turn best to the end for epsilon. T is our target equals the object and location of maximum element of A. Oops. Or each value x is input rate a. Now I 
Yeah, okay. Now we don't need uh, these things, it's fine. If x is equal to t, then best equals max, best, ouch, oops. Otherwise, count to zero. Looks good. It's cool. Bam. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go, come on. A count and best count. Turn the best to the end. Let our target equal at uh, max spread a for that x of a if x is equal to our target then best equals the maximum of itself and we can count otherwise zero all righty looks good it's cool and you know, let's just stick this on one line, it's cool, right? And then let's actually just stick this up here too. That's the cool thing about JavaScript, is it'll work out fine like that. JavaScript's pretty flexible, so it's cool. Let's just restructure Python real quick. So oh, actually I can't do the plus equals within this kind of Yeah, just leave it like that. Yeah, this one I can shorten up a little bit, right? It's cool. Oops, hold on. Yeah, looks good. It's cool. Boom. Okay, let's see. Do Kotlin next. Array. R. Count, so I'll just do best count. So pair of zero, zero, and the best in the end for x and a. If t equals a dot max, if x is equal to t, then best equals the maximum of itself, and then come to count. Zero, and then we'll shorten this up a little bit. That's cool. Looks good. Looks good. Okay, see the best for last here, the rust. Big money, no whammies. Here we go. Okay, it's our array of vectors. Oops. Okay. Let mute count. Best count zero zero. Turn the best at the end for x and a dot, oops, just come out like that. T equal a dot max dot unwrap. If x is equal to t, then count is incremented by one. At best equals the maximum best count. Use person max otherwise count equals zero okay looks good uh oh uh, expected one argument really hold on rest max of Vector. No value maximum value. Iter dot. Oh, I see. A dot iter dot max to unwrap. I32 in reference to I32. If the object in the location of X. Is that right? 
Oh, let me just reference that thing then. Hold on. Reference that thing, reference that thing. <clears throat> no. Uh... Oh. Dereference it is what I meant to do. Is it? No? Move out of the A occurs here. Oh. What? Or used borrow A occurs here. Ah. Uh, clone. Does that work? Yeah, and then borrow X here, right? I think no. Copy what I guess is borrowed. Borrow of A occurs here. Borrow later used here. I thought I cloned it so I don't have to borrow it. Let's just do this. This is really ugly, but whatever. No, it's freed, huh? Hmm. Can I just clone that thing. Okay, does that work? Maybe, yay. All right, that wasn't too bad. That Kotlin on the first question was painful, but that, yeah, that wasn't too shabby. Just clone that thing, pretty decent solution, right? That's cool. Let the target TP the maximum value of the input array, then turn the maximum adjacent count of values. X. Equal to target T within the input array. Okay. Eh, good enough, right? Nothing too fancy. Let the target T be the maximum value of the input array and return the maximum adjacent count of values X equal to T within the input array, right? That's cool. I guess that's the best answer, right? as the best answer, whatever. Okay, let's move on. Good enough, okay, 47 minutes. Let's do this in Python first. About 47 minutes remaining in the contest. So, so far, Q1 took about 30 minutes. A few Kotlin. Q2 took about 13 minutes. That's decent. Okay, 47 minutes left. Get my AK on. Here we go. We need zero index renowns, Bossinger. We call index i and range k and minus k. Good, the following conditions are satisfied. The K-elements before the index are, are non-increasing. The K-elements after the index are non-decreasing. Return on the array of good indices sorted in increasing order. There are two good, increase, uh, good indices in the array, index 2, 0, 1, 2. These are all descending. Non-increasing order. Two to the left and two to the right or down relative. It's down, down, down. Okay, so we need to keep track of the ups and downs, right? Pre-process the input from left to right, right? Keep track of ascending 
Descending, descending, run links, left to right, and right to left correspondingly. That's the game plan. Right, and then, then use that for O1 lookups per candidate. I index. Okay. Answer is this guy. I'm trying to answer in the end. All the good indices. Right. So <clears throat> let's do this. N equals the length of A. L. Always a length one, right? So one times N. R is one times N. For I in range K, N minus K non inclusive. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven, five non inclusive, zero, one, two, three, four, five non inclusive. Yes, yeah, so it's good. Okay. This we want to create the recurrence relation based on the adjacent value. If it's non-increasing order, then it's equal to or greater than, greater than or equal to for i in range one to n non-inclusive, l sub i equals l sub i minus one. One plus L sub I minus one if A sub I is greater than or equal to A sub I minus one. Right, it's it's descending, right? It's non-increasing in the order before is on so it goes down. This one's bigger than that one. Zero. Or J in range N minus two down to zero not inclusive, right? Make one not inclusive. R sub i is one plus R sub i plus one. If A sub i minus one is less than or equal to A sub i, right? So I'm gonna go from the right, oops, J, so J is J to the right, I to the left, right? That works out fine. So the one to the right is smaller than the current one, right? Non, should be going up, right? It should be bigger as we go this way. It's bigger, hold on. Let's do this, let's do, keep it in order. So a sub i minus one is to the left of a sub i. And it has to be, it's non-increasing. It's non-increasing. And then J plus one is to the right of J and it has to be non, non-decreasing, right? So it's getting bigger. And it's getting smaller. This one's getting bigger. 
All right, okay, that looks good. That's fine, whatever. Okay, and then <clears throat> so it should be one, two. So the count should equal K on each side then. If L sub I equals K and R sub I equals K. What's cool about Python, we can do this. Oops, ands dot append I. Okay. Uh oh. That doesn't work. Or I in range K in minus K. Print at the string I. Oops. This L sub I is L sub I. R sub I is equal to R sub I. What's going on here? Zero, one, two. It's three and four. Oh, okay. It has to be at least K. K is less than equal to L sub I. And k is less than or equal to right it meets or exceeds two, three, and nothing. Okay, cool. Oh no. Oh, okay. Inclusive. Output was four, I'm searching four and five. Uh oh. Still not right. Hold on, let's look at this and let's document that. This is not quite right. Hold on, I'm gonna grab this whole thing. Good first try, but we got a bug. That's fine. Failure is the path to success. Failure points me in the right direction. Okay, let's fix this up. So what's wrong? Switching four and five. Zero, one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four to the left. One, two, three, four to the right. All right. Five is, L sub five is saying one. Ah, it's not inclusive of I. I minus one, I plus one. Four and five is cool, okay. Let's do this. These are sample test cases. It should be two, three, empty. Four, five, looks good. Comment that out. Uh-oh. Oh, dang. Okay, I don't want that. Oops. Okay. Big money. Yay. Okay. So this is cool. And we can clean this up a little bit too. All right. So we'll just return I for I and range K and minus K not inclusive if this guy. Okay. Final answer. Something like that is fine, right? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Let's go through here. So this is a form of dynamic programming with a very naive occurrence relation. If you 
solutions. We'll change this to our dynamic programming later, maybe. Right. Oh, let's just do it now, right? Art of dynamic programming is cool. <clears throat> At least I think it's cool. Okie dokie. We have this guy. Bam. 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 Hopefully this helps other people. It's not necessarily that easy to see sometimes. Reprocess the input to mm, reduce the asymptotic bounds to O of one per i. Index candidate. And I we we track the run length of adjacent values and descending and ascending ascending. Order non strictly. That's that means it's equal to perhaps descending and ascending order from left to right and right to left correspondingly. That looks good. Cutlin. Okay, let's let's hurry up and get this done, right? So I can hopefully have a, a shot at Q4. Three. Uh, four. Plus. Okay. We have this guy. Stick him in here. And let's do C plus plus next. How about guys with our integers? Okay, so then as the size, yeah, I also in R sub n. Or I is one, I is less than n, n, sub i equals just one, one plus if a sub i minus one, one to the left is bigger or equal to a sub i, then it'll be L sub i minus one, which will build upon up by zero. And then similarly for j from n minus two is n minus one not inclusive down to zero inclusive. R sub j equals one plus a sub j is less than or equal to a sub j plus one. So uh, j plus one by zero, okay. And then which i from k to n minus k not inclusive. I couldn't answer. Oops. Okay, and we'll turn that answer to the end. And stop push back. I, if and only if, oops, if L sub I minus one is less than, oops, it exceeds K or meets K, and K is less than or equal to R sub I plus one. There you go. 
Something like that. Looks good. Cool. Bam. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. All right. Let's do this. How about just create in here? Four. And then we create L and R2, right? L equals array of signs in. That fill one. R is array of signs in. Fill one as well. Okay. Four. I. One, that's just an n, a sub i is one plus if a sub i minus one is bigger than a sub i, a sub i minus one, which we'll build upon and in the same way in the opposite direction, down to zero inclusive, r sub j is one plus if a sub j is less than or equal a sub j plus one, then we'll build on that guy, otherwise zero. Then we'll return an array of all indices, zero to n minus one inclusive, where for each i value, L sub, oh wait, hold on. A sub n, a k to k, n minus k non inclusive, the keys dot map i, i plus k dot filter i, okay, k. That exceeds k and i plus one also exceeds k. There we go. Looks good. That's cool. Okay. Ooh. There we go. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. All right. Kotlin and Rust are next. Just do Kotlin. A K and is the size of the array, and then left is an int array, size n for one. R is also an int array, size n for one. Four i n one until n. So i equals one plus. If a sub i minus one is bigger or equal to a sub i, then a sub i minus one, that's our basic current relation. And then similarly, from right to left in the other direction, j n minus two down to zero inclusive. R sub j is one plus if a sub j, so let's replace with j plus one, R sub j plus one, I'm at zero. Then we'll return int array sub so n minus k dot map it plus k dot filter. K is less than or equal to L sub it minus one, and k is also. And this is a bit greater than regular k, right? And it plus you know, right, the adjacent indices i. Uh oh, that does not look right at all. Hmm, what did I do wrong here? Oop. So it. Uh oh, array out of bounds exception. N minus k, it, it plus k.
Where is it complaining? Line 10, let's be less, okay, line 10. Into array of size n minus k. Wait, it's too, is it too big? N minus k. It's strange that JavaScript worked then, if I'm wrong about this. Zero to, um, in my, it should be in my 2K, isn't it? Two times K? Because we're moving the first K and the last K, isn't it? Yeah, JavaScript's a little bit more lenient. Oops. Let's see. Yeah, I think this is correct. It's more correct than my first solution. Because we take k from the left and k from the right, right? So Kotlin is a little bit more strict. That makes sense. So two times k. Looks good. Yay. OK. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, then rest is next. Come on, rest, don't give me a hard time. Come on, hey, nobody, don't let me down. 32. 32. <clears throat> okay. Be nice if it is a vector of view size. <clears throat> All right, well, whatever. Let's do this. Slant in is a dot length. Let mute L equal a vector value one size n. <coughs> Same thing. Value one size n or I n. Zero one until n non inclusive. So i equals one plus if a sub i minus one is bigger than a sub i, a sub i minus one, otherwise zero or j and n minus two down to zero and minus one non-inclusive reversed and Okay, so you size R sub J is one plus if A sub J is less than A sub J plus one. R sub J plus one, Y is zero. And you want to return a vector of all the values on, right? So, Let's just do this, let me to ends equal vector. This is the easy way for now. For I n k until n minus k non-inclusive. If k uh, else of I minus one exceeds k and R sub j plus one, oops, I plus one also exceeds j then n stopped. Push I as I thirty two, something like that. Uh -oh. You size found I thirty two. Let K equals K and you size. Things easier on myself. Oh, dokey, that was good. Yay. Okay, let's see if I can actually clean this up a little bit and do this functional style here. So, I 
filter those into a vector. Vector of values in a range. To collect, yeah, I'll collect the range. K until n minus k not inclusive. Dot filter which I value. These are all the eyes I want. Dot collect as a vector of integer I thirty twos. Maybe no cannot be able to use size, right? Yeah, use size, okay. Dot map I I as I three two. Looks good. Looks good. Okay. It looks good. Okay, and we have 18 minutes left in the contest, right? This is cool. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, 18 minutes for Q3. Here we go. Or Q4, the unicorn. All right, Q4, we have. Oops. We have about 18 minutes remaining. Contest. Okay. There's a tree connected under direct a graph. No cycles. Okay. A tree has no cycles. The tree is a graph with no cycles. It's by definition. It's what's connected to it, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. I I know to the integer edges. Okay, fine. Good path is simple path that satisfies the following conditions. Start and end at the same value. All nodes in between. Less than or equal to the start. Okay, fine. Return the number of distinct good paths. <coughs> this version I counted the same path. Interesting. Okay, so a good node with the same value. All these values are different, aren't they? I know. All the values are here. Three, three, one, one. Okay, anything between one, one is no good, right? There's one additional good path. First path is treated that there's five good paths consisting of a single node. One, two, three, four, okay, itself. And then one path here. Zero, two, three is not a good path because two is bigger than one. Okay, and there's a whole bunch of these values, 100,000. Five good paths consist of a single node, two additional good paths, zero, one, and two, three. Two, three. What? Two, three. Oh, no, because they're equal. They're adjacent and equal. Okay. Interesting.
So you know, the question is, how do we go about this, right? So we start off with brute force and then optimize the brute force. So we can DFS this thing from every value to every other value that's equal to itself. How would you, how would we improve? Brute force though. Yeah, let's start with brute force. Purely then optimize. Um, offhand, it seems would need to revert as I make that later. Something like that, right? Array of values or edges. So we can create an adjacency list and then DFS it for brute force. So you can DFS as long as it's less than or equal to your current value. And then divide those by two. Because there's bi directional. Okay, count, return count divided by two, with pairs. <coughs> EDJ is a default dictionary list for U, V, and E. Jason U dot append the V, adjacent to V dot append U. List the values per edge. Oh, hold on. UVW and zip E. A. You took you. Does that work? It's adjacency list. And if I use something like that, zero has one, one, and two for three. So it has one, no, that's not right. Yeah. And you, Is the edge cost of here or weight zero one cost one zero two cost three two three cost two right two four cost one what uh the edges don't have cost it's the vertices themselves that has a cost or a value for vertices, not for edge. Okay. This is just the cost of each node. Okay. 
UV and E, Jason Sabine and B, Jason Sabine and U. Okay, and then O, U, or U and And it's the length of cost of you. It's been seen as a new set. If you in scene turn otherwise seem to add you and be adjacent to you. <clears throat> if cost of V is less than or equal to the cost of U, Then we'll add it, right? Um, look, we'll count. Or actually, we can just return the count. It should be fine. All right, let's do this. Count to zero. Count plus equals one. If that else zero. Turn the count in the end. Go. If hold on, it's not quite right. You actually, the cost has to be equal to each other, right? <clears throat> cost of U equals the cost of B. And plus, whatever appears we find, cost of U is equal to cost of V. If the cost of V is less than or equal to the cost of U, then we'll go to V. Yeah, so let's do this. Um, local count. Rather than returning as recursive stack on lines, we just accumulate it as we go. It's a little bit cleaner code, perhaps. Okay, count is incurred by one if cost is equal, and then we'll go traverse a different node. Okay. Something like that. Scene. Oops. Five is not correct. Let's see what's going on. Uh, you seen 
zero, go nowhere because there's nowhere to go. <coughs> One, we go to zero, we go to zero. We should also visit more than that though. Scene. One goes to zero and we go nowhere from zero. Oh. Oh, okay, we need to start the start value, not just the recent value. <clears throat> See, I mean, the threshold. Hi. Possibly is less than or equal to just call it start you start scene you start scene you start scene uh it's not right. Uh, it's less than or equal to start. Uh, okay. So start exceeds you. Oh, cost. Right. Cost of you. It exceeds start. Or are you using scene? It's not right still. Exceed storage. String up at two. It doesn't go anywhere because these are both bigger than it. Okay, so you start up at two. Uh, zero. Yes. Two, zero. Goes to three. There's nothing there. Okay, that looks fine. Let's start at bit three. Two, zero, one, four. Three. Two, zero, one. Four. Two, zero, If we start off at three, we shouldn't go to two, right? We should never go to two, right? Cost of three. Oh, the cost of start. Cost of start. One zero two three four. One zero two three. I get to four. Cost of start. Cost of start equals the cost of B. That's when you increment it by one. Oh, this is too many though. Eight.
from one to one, two to two. As long as art does not even clean. This B is not the start. <laughs> oh, man. Really? Four to one and one to four. Four to one. That sounds right. Four to one and one to four. Divided by two plus N. One, two, three, four, five. Plus two, one, right? What the heck is going on? Non local count and count should be five and two. Is it five and zero? What? I'm incoming to the count. Oh, I'm not actually in Germanic, okay. Zero. Okay. What start does equal be there? Right? Yeah, that's easier to do. Let's do this. Our pairs. Oh, B reference before assignment. Oh, yeah, so that doesn't work. It doesn't track by direction. Okay, so. That's good like that, right? So this is the brute force solution. It looks okay. There for now, it's good. Okay. So this should TLE, so six, seven, and one. Six, seven, and one looks good. Okay, so TLE, and then how do you avoid TLE? Which time do I have left? Oh, the contest ended. Okay. Oh, that's the wrong answer, anyhow. Okay, well, to do, oops, oops, of Q4. <laughs> All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Cheers. I hope it, it helps someone. Myself included, perhaps.